This is a hot take, but I actually think that the MCAT's not that bad of a test. Not that it's not hard, it's very hard. I'm saying that I think it actually does kind of select for the people who would excel in medical school specifically. Not necessarily who will be a great doctor, but who will excel in medical school. And I say this because the further I get in my medical education, the more I see the same kind of logic popping up that's required to answer MCAT questions popping up in my medical school tests and in my step exams and even in things like the research passages that I read. This is a test of like logical thinking there, selecting the smartest, most logical people to go into medical school. And that is you. Hello everyone. If you're new to this channel, my name is Maggie. I'm a third year medical student and a former professional MCAT tutor after I scored a 526 in my own exam. I run this business and this channel with my brother, John, so that we can get more y'all into medical school, honestly. In today's video, I'm going to show you how the double AMC is trying to trick you because they are. Like I said, this is a test of just weeding out like the most logical people that take this exam. And so they're trying to like set these little traps so that you can hop over them. And I'm gonna show you how right now. So there's four tricks that I think that AAMC like regularly throws in, and I'm gonna show them to you in the context of the CARS passage. And it's specifically, it's gonna be the passage six in the AAMC a free practice exam, the scored one. I broke down this uh, passage and these questions on our channel just a few videos ago, so I would really highly recommend that you go back and watch that video so that you're like, know this passage and know these questions and everything, because I'm not gonna go back through them. So the first way that I think the AAMC tries to trick you is with a little thing that me and John like to call name dropping. What name dropping really is, is when a question on the MCAT mentions a word or phrase that is commonly used up in the passage to make you think that that answer choice is right because especially with these cars passages we're always talking about how main idea main idea main idea like that's what you answer questions with and so when you see an answer choice that has this phrase that was commonly used up in the passage you're starting to think well, maybe that's the main idea so maybe I should just pick that answer choice a lot of times these answer choices that use name dropping they may be very attractive but they may not actually be right and I'm gonna give you an example right here it's actually the first question in this passage and I it literally it was just the first one I saw and it uses name dropping so like that's how common it is so if you'll remember the passage honestly the main idea is like occupational stress job stress blah 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 and a says occupational stressor and it makes it an attractive answer choice because you want to answer this with the main idea but that's not the main idea like heavy smoking being an occupational stressor that's not the main idea of this passage and you have to take the whole context of the question into account when you're choosing an answer choice because you need it to both reflect the passage and to answer the question. So right here, C is the correct answer choice and it doesn't say the most attractive word. It says destructive behavioral strains, which was mentioned one time in the passage and that's not super attractive. This is an example of name dropping. So be aware of it. And honestly, I have, I have one big tip that I think that will like really help you to not fall into like any of these traps. And so I'm gonna get it at the end. The second way that the double AMC tries to trick you a lot, especially with cars passages, is what John and I call a cop out. And that is when it's a correct answer choice or an answer choice that like makes sense in our heads, but that doesn't necessarily either answer the question or reflect the passage. And I'm gonna give you an example with question number 35 in this same passage. So this says, based on information in the passage, one can infer employees that perceive they have a high level of control over their work environment will be. So if we read the passage, then we know that having a high level of control over your work environment is considered good. It's considered like less stressful, blah, blah, blah. That was like part of the main idea that I mentioned in my passage breakdown. And so overall in your head, you have like, oh, this is good. And so you read answer choice A and it says more likely to engage in constructive acts that successfully deal with stressors. And you see words like successfully and you see constructive and you're starting to think like that's a positive outcome. That's probably the answer choice. And no, it's not. B is the correct answer choice. And that is because it directly ties into the passage where they were talking about like threatening workplace, blah, blah, blah. If I just looked at this question without having any of the background information of the passage, I might choose A because in my mind, like B is kind of silly. And I'm thinking high level of control over the work environment is good. And so they're, oh, they're gonna, you know, cope better with their stresses and blah, blah, blah. Like A says, 
and that may be true like that's that may be a correct like thought pattern but it's not what reflects the passage the best and we have to like have tunnel vision on what is the passage saying i have evidence from the passage do not bring your own like evidence into a car's passage on oh, like passage is the bible so you have to select something that has passage evidence not just something that sounds like it would be correct in reality so that's a cop-out answer if you choose that right so that's why we call it that the third one and this is like so sad i, I this is why i chose a car's passage honestly because like these are all so salient in car's passages to me and maybe that's just because i struggle with cars the most but the third one is the time trap and that's when they give you some kind of like long-winded uh, answer choices or a question sim or they make you do a lot of math or they make you like look at this chemical equation really closely or something like that it's all throughout the MCAT and it's just so that you can sit there and waste a bunch of time and I'm gonna give you an example with question 36 in this passage and like just looking at this like that's a lot of words and this isn't even like the longest cars question I could find it's just the longest one in this passage you're on such a tight timeline with cars and like theoretically you have to answer this question in one minute and like it would take me close to a minute just to read all those things not even just to like think about how they apply to the passage and if they answer the question and yada 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 and then like you know stress out and like sweat and stuff you have to account for all the time you're going to spend biting your nails in the mcat but this one's pretty straightforward and now i'm going to give you these T this tip that I think will help with like all of the traps that I've mentioned thus far and it's when you read a question pause at the end of the question and think what do I want the answer choice to be that way you're not attracted to answer choices that just name drop because you're like oh that's not what I'm looking for so I'm going to move on yes it says this phrase that was really common up in the passage but that doesn't answer the question. I've already answered the question. I'm just finding it now. It prevents you from falling for those cop-out questions as well. Because I think it's really easy to pick those cop-out answer choices when you're going through and you have no clue what you like want the answer to be. And you read something that sounds like it would be good in reality or sounds like right, but may not necessarily reflect the passage. And so you panic pick that because you're running out of time anyway, which leads me into the time trap. You should read all answer choices, but you should probably not spend time deliberating every single answer choice down to the details. If you read a question and you think about it and you think about what you want the answer choice to be, you can skim over answer choices and find one. And when you find one that matches what you want it to be, then click that and like make sure to read it. And like if it perfectly answers the other answer choices or if it perfectly answers the question and the other answer choices don't, like don't worry about it like pick it and move on because these time traps are like i struggled so hard with the timing on cars like i finished with like plenty of time in every other section but on cars it was like down to the last second was why i was choosing answer choices so don't let that be you be really strict on these timing things and that just reading i think that reading the question pausing and answering it for yourself and then just finding that in the answer choices is probably the best way to avoid all of these tricks that i've mentioned so far as well as just being aware of them being aware of like okay just because it has a you know a, a phrase that's in the passage a lot doesn't mean that it's the right answer yada, yada, yada. the last one because i told you guys that there was four i don't have an example for this because honestly I, I feel like maybe the mcat's moving away from it a little bit just from like skimming through this practice exam but I, it still pops up every so often and that is absolutes so absolutes you guys have probably seen this in questions and stuff it's when like an answer choice will say like words like only or always or never those like absolute phrases that like give no wiggle room for anything else but that answer choice to be exactly right it doesn't necessarily make the answer choice wrong if there's an absolute phrase in there just like it doesn't necessarily make the answer choice wrong if there is a commonly if there's like a word in there that's like if there's a name dropped word or if there's an answer choice that feels right in reality like all of these things are just tricks that the AAMC uses to make other answer choices look more attractive it doesn't necessarily mean that an answer choice that has that in there is wrong 
if there is an absolute phrase, it just means that there is a very high burden of proof that you need to reach with passage evidence in order to support that answer choice. You need to have it somewhere in the passage where it basically says that like only this, 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 or it's always this, this, this. And that that's like the only way that I would feel comfortable like choosing an answer choice. And I think the best thing to do for that is honestly just be aware that when you see those, like those should be like red flags in an answer choice. And you should think twice if you're going to pick that, you should be like, I need to like really have it solid in my head that this is exactly what the passage was saying and that they don't want any wiggle room. That the author was very absolute in their opinion. And that's why I can choose this absolute answer choice. Does that make sense? I hope so. I don't know why I asked my camera if it makes sense. But anyway, those are common tricks that the NAAMC uses to make other answer choices look attractive so that their test is a little bit harder. And really, once you guys like, like understand what these tricks and traps and stuff are, like when you go through an MCAT, you will see them everywhere. So my biggest tip to you is to answer the question before you read the answer choices. You might have received that like advice in undergrad or something but it's so much more salient on the MCAT I think because the time limit is so like short like I really never struggle with timing on any test in undergrad but on the MCAT it was a huge barrier and I know that a lot of people feel that way too so that's all that I have for you guys today if you want me to show these like tricks and everything in science passages I can totally do that let us know what you want to see down in the comments below and make sure to hit like and subscribe and send this to another pre-med friend who's going on this MCAT journey with you. You can check out all links in the description below or go on our website, browse whatever you want to do. I will see you in the next one.